This is Fintech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner. And this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey. So tell me, muse, of that great planet, plant of many resources which wandered far and wide, the ancient plant of food, fuel, and fiber cultivated for millennia as we venture through the past 10,000 years. We will explore and discover the plant from which cannabis derived. There are many uses of the plant. Hemp, cannabis, hashish, cannabis in religion, cannabis in medicine, cannabis and Uncle Sam. Oh, dear Uncle Sam. And so our odyssey begins. Today, our odyssey is not long ago and far away. It is current and in progress. Cannabis, which is a part of the hemp plant, has a long history as an aid or complement to inspiration in art, philosophy, music, and other kinds of human endeavor. The use of cannabis as medicine can be traced back 5,000 years. Interest in medical Cannabis is currently on the rise in many parts of the world. Cannabis was and is a sacred plant for many people and has historically been used in religious ceremonies in many cultures from Southeast Asia to North America. Our guest today, Terry Heady, a Vietnam era Navy veteran with multiple sclerosis patient a cannabis patient, as well as a cannabis advocate. For military veterans and young mothers, to a Christian minister and former probation officer, the 100 Americans profiled in the book, Cannabis Saved My Life, have starkly different backgrounds. Our guest today is one of those whose life was saved by cannabis. It's hard to imagine the unbelievable suffering that she endured, as well as the courageous resilience due to the social stigma, the perils of illegality, and the disapproval of Western medicine when she turned to a controversial but age-old planet. Planet. Plant. So today, our guest is Terry Heady, a dear friend and as you may suspect, we have been Democrats for all of our lives. <laughs> you know. yeah, and, nice to be here. <laughs> and so Terry is one of those courageous people that took a stand in this beautiful, beautiful book, Cannabis Saved My Life. So we're going to talk to her about how cannabis saved her life. Yeah, I'd be happy to tell you that story. It's a I um, was a computer programmer, computer engineer. I worked for the government. I went in one morning, set my coffee down and my bagel down, my regular routine, getting ready to start my day, went to sit down, missed my chair, and somehow landed on top of it. Mm -hmm. I had uh, an instant of paralysis, and they came, took me by ambulance. I went, and for months, we thought maybe I had some kind of orthopedic program, a problem. They gave me a lot of drugs. They put me in hot water therapy, one of the worst things you can do for MS. And nothing was working. I just could not get back on my feet. Now, I want to tell you what MS is. If you look around the room and you see these electrical cords, your nerves are covered by something called the myelin sheath. Now, my body thinks that sheath is a foreign object and it attacks it and just tears up that covering on the nerve. Now just imagine. So that's what oh, MS yeah. is. That's yeah. what MS is. Imagine if you walked around the room and ripped off all the electrical cord covers in this room, you'd have massive short circuits, right? And then after a while, when that, that starts to, it forms a lesion. That's what multiple sclerosis, Latin for multiple lesions. And that lesion is from where it is eaten away at the sheath. And then eventually, with the MRIs now, which are much less dramatic than 20 years or so when I had to have a spinal tap, 
now the MRIs they show up as dark holes. They call them dark holes on your MRI. So I have a universe in my brain. I have dark holes. <laughs> and, and it's a very debilitating disease. I have what's called relapsing remitting. When I went into my neurologist, a military guy, and I shut my record boom, in front of him and put my hands on top of it. And I said, okay, I've been doing some research. They're getting ready to medically retire me out. I'm a widow with two kids. I can't go. I've got it. He said, I want to try cannabis. And he put his hands on top of mine and he goes, you got nothing to lose. So I literally uh, started smoking, which a lot of people cannot do, but being a child of the 60s, <laughs> you know, I was not, you know, it was not uncomfortable for me. And I, I smoked like a burning haystack, but within six weeks, I went from not walking at all to walking with a cane in six weeks. I have a theory that what it did was in your body, there is the endocannabinoid system. It has natural THC receptors that are there. So I have a theory that I went to pick up my cup. With MS, sometimes I think I'm holding it, I'll drop it. What I think it did was it saw that THC receptor when it went to sig send that signal, hold on to the box, don't drop it. It saw that THC receptor, boom, fired off, and I ended up with a good signal. And I think that's what's happened. Now, re once you have a relapse, though, I never went back to that level of fitness that I had prior to my first episode. So I, um, I try to make sure I don't go into one of those episodes. So how long has it been? Over 20 years. Wow. And I'm very, I mean, you know, for an uh, MS patient, I'm doing really well. I have some permanent uh, damage to this ner uh, optic nerve in this mm -hmm. eye. The optic nerve being the biggest nerve in your body. So, of course, it has a little damage. But again, it is mitigated by the use of cannabis. So you take it on a daily basis? Absolutely. Or is, it, is there a regimen? Yeah, I take it on a daily basis. I will, I will consume over about a quarter an ounce a day. Is, I, That's a I, lot. I don't, is That's that a lot? a lot. Okay. Right now, when a patient comes to me, I talk to them about microdosing. Because when I first started this, I had no idea. And there's not scientific evidence available. I mean, you, you should be able to go to a PDF like a doctor has, and, or what do they call it, P physician's desk reference, PDR. Right. And you should say, oh, person with MS, oh, we'll give them pill A and pill B and pill, they all take those. Well, we don't have that, that accumulation of data on an MS patient. So I get them when they start out, now I tell patients, I guess, microdose, as little as, you know, take one hit, put it down, walk away. You know, we try to get them to microdose. But we need doctors and nurses and, you know. You after to, all of these years and we don't have those studies? No, we, we because it is classified yes. as that schedule one, uh, people are afraid to touch it. A doctor doesn't want to touch it and lose his license. A university doesn't want to touch it and lose their funding there for grants and other things. So the, the improper scheduling is killing people. Well, and, and of course, everybody knows the uh, schools, the medical schools, are underwritten by the big farmers, pharmaceutical companies. So, of course, they're not going to teach. Oh, they're exactly. not even going to mention it. So That's they right. don't have a clue. And as we age... And you know this as well as I, as we age, we can't do the pharmaceuticals like we used to when we were younger. My father-in-law had an IV, a very bad infection. They put him on an IV antibiotic. And next thing you know, he's having a, a martini with Obama. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he's hallucinating. I mean, and I thought that was rather startling because he's a Republican. So <laughs> I, mean, I said, I know that we have a problem here. So this gives us another herbal re remedy for our uh, senior citizens that are going to be looking for something that is not so harsh on their systems. So when, um, and then if, can you talk about the um, opioid addictions? Yes. That they want to, you know, it's always been preached for a long time. Oh, marijuana, pot, cannabis, as we're calling it now, whatever you want to call it, it's an, it's uh, one of those gateway drugs. It's going to get you started on harder drugs. And, and if that was true, oh my goodness, I wouldn't even be alive today. <laughs> but what it does, and I've talked to other doctors about this, is it gives them a mechanism 
to get them off of the opioids, get them off, you know, into something that, you know, manages their life better. And I don't know if you've ever seen it. People that are on heroin, they use methadone to get them off, and methadone is a filthy chemical. And its withdrawal is even harsher than heroin. So to come up with something so, so much, you know, I, obviously it won't mitigate all of the withdrawal symptoms, but it, we, the anecdotal evidence and the doctors that I've been talking to say this helps their patients get off their opioids. Well, I was talking to a young lady at an event, and she was asking if this was um, okayed by the FDA. And I said, well, no, this is a weed, it's not a drug. Okay. And she's looking at me, and I said, well, you know, aspirin is not okayed by the FDA. Right. And she's, really? Yeah. I said, yeah, and it was made from the bark of a tree. See? And so then she's busy, she said, well, and then I said, well, you know, opiates are okayed by the FDA. That's correct. Yeah. Now I ask you. <laughs> I ask you. So, you know, uh, of course I'm not selling anything. I don't have the wherewithal to do that. Uh, but it was just that conversation and I realized how little, or I know little, which is why we're doing the program, but how little other people. And, and that's you know, why this program is really helpful. Now, one of the things that we're talking, since we're on this kind of subject, is right now there is a, it's called the uh, Medical Cannabis Legislative Oversight Working Group. It's Act 230-230. It, is, it was established by the legislature to develop and recommend legislation that would improve the medical cannabis dispensary system that we're trying to stand up right now. And um, if you go to that website, I gave you, uh, they have a, a draft of their initial report, what's going to happen. And um, it's one of the reasons I wanted to mention it because we're talking about regulation. And I was hoping that when it left the hands of Narcotics Enforcement Division, where it had had a home for so many years, that by going to the Department of Health, that they would have a more, uh, an attitude of more patient oriented attitude. And it turned out that they are mainly concerned about the regulation, the regulatory aspects. And uh, one of the things they've done is that cannabis is not accessible, you know, to local residents. We're talking about, okay, if you do go out and you get your card, which you have to do, and then you go and you get, okay, I've got my card, now what do I do? Yes. You know, now before I might, you know, you might have to see your, one of your friends might say, well, behind the McDonald's, it's a guy with a black truck, and da 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 Well. We don't want to use the black market for me medical purposes. Well, just to let you know that we did visit the laboratory. Nice. Um, Steep Hill Laboratory. Oh, nice. And what I learned there terrified me because we talked about this one man that died with cannabis, but it had mold. Right. And so then I thought, oh, Heavy metals, they, they were talking about heavy metals, yes. pesticides and whatnot. Herbicides, filth. You yes. don't want any just dog to walk into your grow room right. wagging its tail. And so I thought, oh, 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 all, I had never thought of all of these things. Yes. So then I thought, well, okay, I like the idea of a laboratory and a dispensary so that and we don't And they're doing get, a wonderful yes. job now because they can test patients. Yes products. I mean, that is like, it, the, what a boon to it, patients. It is. So that, however, since 2002, yes. uh, the state says, okay, I can have a card and I can grow 10 plants. I don't know anything about growing 10 plants. Right. And if mold and pesticides and these things are an issue, how am I going to deal with that? What right. do I know about what's in this soil? Uh, yeah, you know, not everyone can grow their own medicine. It's like that's, you ask people to go out and grow, grow bark for their aspirin. Yeah, it's no. like no, what, no. What, this and, is this is ridiculous. And it's it, since it's not accessible right now to local president uh, residents in Hawaii, it's not even really accessible even with our dispensaries open because right now they're averaging five hundred dollars an ounce. And I'm telling what's an you, ounce? An ounce, I should have brought one with me, but it is a measurement of, um, this is for edibles. 
because I've been trying to get them. We can't even have edibles because they talk about packaging. And if you look at this packaging, this comes from uh, California, I believe. And it, it's, uh, it says medical cannabis cookie on it. It gives the, the dosage on it, you know, things like that. And, and they have regulated this to the point where they're not even offering edibles at yeah. dispensaries. And you wouldn't go in and want to smoke, buy flour and roll it and smoke it. You want an edible. You want an oil. I have pediatric patients with epilepsy that have great response. They want an oil or they want, you know, they don't want to, you don't have a kid roll a joint and smoke okay. it. Okay. You know? Well, listen, we need to take a break. We'll come back in a minute and we will talk more with Terry Heady about all of these wonderful things, medical cannabis, ah, a double chocolate chip cookie. Okay. So thank, we will be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. It sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion. Nothing is making sense for me and you. Aloha, and we're back. And today we are visiting with Terry Heady, who is a cannabis advocate, a patient, and a survivor, of all things, of MS. <laughs> a retiree medical, I meant uh, Navy, Vietnam era veteran. That's right. And all kinds of wonderful things. That's right. And so, Tell us more. We were talking about the uh, dispensaries and, and the dispensary about, right. system. What, what, tell us about. Yeah, what the idea is to be able to take your card and go in there once you get it and, and buy the products you need. But right now, they've created a high grade and it's well tested, but a high grade, but it's a boutique item for sale. I mean, it's not something, you've got people here working two jobs, they fight traffic, they pay the highest prices for, ever, for try buying a gallon of milk. Right. You know, and now we have a local source of cannabis and it's priced out of reach. What are the prices? Uh, I've, when I went to the opening, the press conference was for the opening. Yeah. Let's say and if you did. that line went around the block. Absolutely. But when they got inside to, to buy, like a person like me that consumes so much, $500 an ounce is just out of sight. I can go to the black market and buy twice as much top shelf best stuff around for that kind of thing five hundred dollars an ounce and ask yourself why yes. because that's what why why this is supposed to if this continues dispensaries have not met the requirements of this act uh, 230 that i referenced they definitely haven't met the requirements of that but it's because of the vertical system they have in place now what i mean by that is that they put everything to have to do with the patient underneath that license, that one license for the dispensary. They grow it. They, if they create an extract, this is what an extract might come in, something like this. If they, if they, whatever they have for sale, they have to create it right under that one thing. Instead of a, a system that we envisioned to begin with, where there would be local growers and there would be more competition. I mean, <coughs> excuse me, if, ra if the dispensaries are raising costs, to deter, to deter diversion, which is totally an off-the-wall idea. I don't know where they would get that. Then increase license holders and put more dispensaries out there instead. Let's get some competition going, and let's get rid of this vertical model that they have. Because if you live in Kahuku and you've got to drive all the way to King Street 
Yes. Not only is it $500 an ounce, but now you've got the cost of driving into town to spend a whole day away from work to yeah. get here. To if get you're back. a patient that can work. What if you're a patient that can't get out of the house? All right. They say that our caregivers, which they're talking about doing away with oh, yeah. in 2018. Oh, horrible idea. You do away with that. Who's going to go grow for me? Who's going to go to when I can't grow, get to the dispensary for me? What about our pediatric patients? You know, this, this is just... To do this, away with caregivers. I, I'm a caregiver for my husband who's 86. Right. Now, he doesn't have a card, but I'm still... If he did go get a card, you would be listed as caregiver so you could, could help him out. We don't have delivery services. Most of the people on, in CONUS, they have delivery services that will go out to a patient's house. They have patient services. One of the things we would like to get started with a patient who we hear, because for our patients that need to grow, we need to send out a consultant so to they teach get them. there, teach them how, get them going. Because where do you get your plants? Yeah, where well, do you get your seeds? That's my you question. You can't even get started. Yeah, yes, how do you get that. started? Right. And so that, that needs to be really addressed. If we are going to take care of our patients, we need to fix the system so that I can buy enough products that I don't have to worry about, okay, I'm going to, you know, I'll try not to uh, take too much today and I'll save some for tomorrow. And that could send me into a relapse uh -huh. where I have not staved off, you know, what I wanted to. So we have got to ultimately affordability is affecting patients and we have to change the model so that patients can afford it. We have to change the model so they can get edibles properly packaged, properly marked. But you know, quite frankly, if a kid got hold of this cookie and ate it all and ate 10 of those cookies, they're not going to die. They may feel sick as a dog, <laughs> yes. but they're not going to OD. If I leave my Valium in my pocket, in my purse and the kid pops a, a couple of those or drink the whole bottle, they're going to die. Right. Mm -hmm. Booze. People leave booze out all the time where kids have accessibility to it. We are responsible patients. You know, give us credit. You know, and diversion, that is not our, that's not our thing. What do you mean diversion? They are so afraid that I am going to buy products at their dispensary and walk out on the street. Now, I just paid $500 for this. So I'm going to walk out on the street and I'm going to ask you for six, I guess. Because how can I sell this on the street at $500 an ounce? You know, no. Nobody that is a patient is interested in anything no. except getting their Get medication. Med yeah. It's, it's it, so... We, so the health department has been lacking in so many areas. So I'm not surprised that they're lacking in this one. This is, they don't believe in this. No, of course I mean, not. It's, it's, it's straight it's, up. Yes. He has said, uh, he's Ridley, or yes. yeah, he said it straight up that he doesn't believe in this as a medication, and he's in charge of the program. I know, but he's missed the ball on nursing homes and other things he didn't pass. So I'm not surprised. Um, I, I'm just not surprised. It's really frustrating when you have it patients is. like me that go to the ledge, and I've been doing this for a decade, and the patients don't like to go to the ledge. First of all, you're not really well enough. It, it's grueling. It is. It is grueling. It is, Chairs it, are even, when you're, even when you're healthy, <laughs> you it's know, grueling. You've yes. got to sit there for long periods of time. You can't always, you know, uh, it's just not something that patients want to do. Now, tell me, because, you know, you and I have been through this Democratic thing for, my party card says 1972. It's like, oh, Sorry. God, I can't <laughs> believe I've done anything that long. But is there an organization, a cadre of cannabis users that can legislate, can lobby as a block? Well, that's, is, is it? No, is that, is, no there we is, really don't. We, we uh, depend on people like the Drug Policy Forum, Americans for Safe Access. So there is a huge need for a patient who we, to get started. And we... It's, it's really difficult to go up there and lobby right. for this when we've had good support from uh, Senator Willie Asparo. Oh, he's, he's been on the show several times, yes. And Representative Della Albalotti has, she has, I want to give her a mixed review. You know, well, that's what I've heard, yeah. Yeah, you know, I want to give her a mixed. So we don't really have someone that's so solid for us, you know, to represent our cause up there because they, it's easier to bargain us away. You know, it, it really is. We don't have we don't have a voting block that they're concerned with. 
I think we need to identify patients as of, you know. Well, you know, like I said, we're both of us coming from this, yeah. this kind of, this thought process. Somehow we need to create an organization so that we do have a block. Yes. We need, okay, folks, you heard it. We need, where, did you put her email up? Yes, because uh, we, we are, need people to, we need to form an organization of patients and caregivers if we are going to make this work. So contact me. Get, yes. my, get my email up. Contact me. We're going to get together, and we are going to take we care got, of this. Yes, we got, we, this. we got this. We, we, we got, need to do this. We've got to do this. Yes. And, it, you know, one of the things that is also people talk about is reciprocity. Do you know what that is? That is for people that might come here on a visit and they have a card from California or Washington or Oregon and they're in a system. We need to fix our system here so and make it so robust and so it's so healthy and it is easy to do with the software they have that we can offer reciprocity to visitors that come over as well. Think about how many people come here. This is maybe the last trip they're going to make in their whole life, you know, and they're going to come sit on the beach. Why should they be denied their medication? But we have to fix this first for our local people. And and one one thing in fixing this, we have to have edibles because most of us live in close proximity to our neighbors in townhouse and condominiums rental units. and all rental units. And you can't smoke. So if you're a patient, you need to get it in some other form. And it really bothered so me we, about the reluctance because, you know, the Department of Health, they are anti-smoking. Yes. Totally. You'd think so they, would, they be, would be out front on, yes. Saying, edibles, edibles, oh. concentrates. We yes. Don't have to do, I mean, but they're, they're not. They're not. Okay. So, all right. For all of you, all two of you that watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know what we need to do? We need to create a group of people, of patients and caregivers, and we need to storm the Bastille. This is an election year. All 51 of the House members are for re-election and half of the Senate. We need, and they all say they're Democrats, which is supposed to be You'd think this would be the easiest yeah, you thing would think ever. this would be the easiest thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, we need to create. We need to come together. We need to make this happen. So what I want them to do is email me because we will get you in a database, in a list. And when legislation comes across this session, I, I'll, we'll make sure that you know the talking points, that you know how to submit your testimony, that we, you'll know what you want to say. We can help you with that. So just email me. Uh, right now we have a, a Hawaii patient rights hui in the works. And so help me. Help. Help yes. all the patients. Okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, again, thank you so much for being with us each week. And thank you, Terry. You will come back again. Oh, as soon as the ledge opens up, we'll get some legislation we'll talk about. How about that? <laughs> yes, please. There we go. Thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you again. Aloha. Aloha.